Ah, I have to watch myself when I do this because I'm sitting in underwear. <laughs> <laughs> how 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 high up can I go? Or oh, it starts getting naughty. <laughs> So today we're going to learn how to uh, create a game using Python. I'm just going to close this down because this is immediately after the previous video. That I am using Windows, which is something that I, I'm actually trying to actively get away from Windows. Like I've been trying to do a transition for the past little while where I'm trying not to use these sort of products that are being monopolized by these big IT companies where they just start like injecting ads into our computer that we don't want. Basically, my point here is that I'm trying to get away from Windows 11 and I want to get into Linux totally off track here for a second but basically we're trying to set up python so it recommends the windows terminal which started this whole thing so uh windows terminal supported by microsoft can run powershell i do have powershell i do also have wsl oh it even says here old cmd.exe still works but outdated okay you know what? we're gonna use ubuntu then so Python 3 version, yes, that, okay, that did not work. And again, we're gonna take a screenshot because this is obviously not working. So we're just gonna send that. Is it messing me up that I'm using uh, Ubuntu instead with WSL? I can try again. Oh, and it's doing it, okay. Did I, did I? Yeah, okay, it is installing pip. So now we need to verify that it works. I always love seeing this when I use the terminal. It just looks awesome when it's compiling and installing and doing different things. I look like a hacker. <laughs> okay, so it's done. Uh, so we can check for the version. So basically we have pip 24.0. Do this, use a virtual environment. Okay, so we're gonna make a directory and then we're gonna go and create a virtual environment. And now we can upgrade. So we're gonna do that. Boom, and it's gonna work exactly like we expected it to. I'm gonna install Pygame, uh, which I'm guessing is a framework in order to uh, either like a, a package or framework or something uh, in order to uh, start making games. Okay, so it says hello from Pygame community. Awesome. So right now we, we have a directory, but I, I don't actually have a game. So no, yeah, you do not have a game yet. You just have a project folder and a virtual environment. So inside the project folder, we're gonna create a file called main.py. We can just uh, go in here. Which which side? This side. <laughs> oh my God, it's so tiny. Zoom in. Uh, so this is our virtual environment. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a file which should be inside this directory here called main.py. And the main.py file, I believe is the file that we need to initiate our application, which in this game, uh, in this case, is gonna be a game. Okay, we're just gonna copy the code here and we're just gonna take it step by step. Inside of here, if I wrap it down, so we import the Pygame library so we can create a window and handle input. And we do that by simply importing Pygame, which we did just install. You have to see like C Sharp and Python and all these programming languages, you have to see them as like, you have this base thing. And if you want to do something else with it, let's say you want to build a mobile game or you want to build, not a mobile game, a mobile app, or you want to build a Windows based game that you can you know, play on Windows, or if you want to build a website, you know, then you have to figure out what framework and packages are used in order to build those things and you import them into your applications. So in this case, we want to build a game using Python. So we're importing Pygame. Uh, we can also import system. So we clean the exit the program when the windows is, when the window is closed. That's good. We need that as well. I'm noticing Python has some, uh, like the way like uh, syntax, it doesn't close off with a semicolon. Like it just like minimizes how much you actually need to write in order to get things working. Like there's not all this junk. Uh, I know that's something that some programmers, they hate seeing when it comes to Python, but I actually think it looks, uh, it looks good. It looks clean. And basically if you're writing a function, you would say something like, is it define def? It's, uh, is it just def? Yeah. Def, okay. So basically load assets, right? So you just basically, this is a function called load assets and you don't write curly brackets, you just indent out basically. And that's gonna tell it, okay, so that's for this particular function. We initialize all imported Pygame modules. So graphics, sound, input, etc. Okay, so we say pygame.init. So we initialize it. 
Now we do also need to define the window width and the window height. These are just variables and we just, we don't need to write var or anything in front of it. We just write the name of it. Actually, these are constants, so they don't change. These are, these cannot be changed. I guess if we have to be able to resize the window, it has to be a variable, not a constant, I'm guessing. But basically we then go in and say, we create the window using width and height defined above. So we say that the screen variable is gonna be equal to pygame.display.setMode which basically goes in and grabs these parameters in order to create a window. And then we set that window equal to screen. So inside the display, the window that we create, we want to set a caption called my first Python game. Then we want to create a clock object to control how fast the game runs. So frames per second. This is, I believe, inside Unity, we have in C sharp something called update and fixed update. Update is just like the frame weight and fixed update is for physics. Because if you put everything inside update, which means that if you have a really, let's say you have a bad computer that can only run a game with like 20 frames per second, then you have a supercomputer that can run a game at 140 frames per second. Then all of a sudden the physics in the game gets out of whack because it's unoptimized for like the different frame rates because they change. So frame rate is very important. Uh, and I'm guessing this is just update inside units or like inside C sharp. It's not fixed update, it's update. So it just updates per frame, uh, which can be a little bit troublesome if we are trying to make physics, but we'll just go with it for now. It can always like, let's see, play a setup, define the size of the player, which is going to be a square. So width and height. Uh, so we have a player size. And then we have a starting position. So X and Y coordinates, because this is a 2D game. Play a size 50. Oh, so both the width and height. So if I want a size to be like the height, then we could say size Y, and then size X, you know, to, to have different sizes. But let's just go with a square, because that is what it's trying to, to give us here. So for each frame, when I move the player, it is going to move it five pixels. And this is where the issue comes in if frame rates is different on different machines. This variable keeps the game running until the player quits, okay? So this basically variable is a Boolean, it's a true and false statement that says, okay, so if this one is true, then while this is true, so while it's running, then do these things. So in this case, you loop through all events. So keyboard, mouse, window, and close. Basically just going through if we have any sort of inputs, is the mouse moving? and are we closing the window? Then I guess, yeah, it's gonna set it to false. So it's gonna quit the game. So keys equal to pygame.key.get pressed. So any sort of keyboard click I do, is gonna get recorded into this variable. And then we're gonna check what this variable is. So if I click on J, it's gonna be registered as J inside keys. And then it's gonna go down and check, okay. Does this keys variable actually uh, fit in with any of these conditions here. So my keyboard is left and right and up and down, right? So if it's left, then we move the player left by simply minusing the player's position on the x-axis with the speed we defined. Uh, but I can see it's actually trying to register my up and down, left and right, just like, which I hate by the way, because I always use WASD like any other video game does. But for some reason, whenever there's a tutorial on how to make a game, they used the arrow keys and that's kind of like, you know, a 90s sort of game thing. Like we don't do that today unless you're making a, a two play game where one person can use one and one can use the other. Uh, keep the player inside the window boundaries. So basically if the player gets outside the boundary, then then stop activating the, uh, the movement script. I, <laughs> for fun at my work, uh, just a fun fact, because I was bored one Friday, um, I built a game using JavaScript inside the, the browser because they blocked off all sorts of websites. And I, I, you know, if I wanted to program something, it had to be JavaScript. I built this uh, game where you have like uh, little tiles painting over each other and you had to like paint as many tiles as possible. In that game, you can move outside the boundary, <laughs> which is kind of fun to see. Okay, so drawing, what is it called inside Unity? Um, rendering? Yeah, render, right? When you render the different uh, objects. So fill the entire screen with a dark background color. Okay, so basically taking the screen and we say dot fill, which is a function that goes in and fills. And then we say we want to have this particular color. So this is RGB, this is red, green, blue. 
right? Draw the player as a yellow square on the screen. So pygame.draw.rect, which is basically draw this rectangle. So basically we're saying we want to draw on the screen and then we want to have these colors here, this color. And then we want pygame.rectangle, which is... So pygame.rect. So we're basically... Oh, it's because I saw it here. It's like, oh, I saw it somewhere. Uh, so we want to draw a rectangle and it's going to be based on the player X, the player Y and the player size. So in that location with that particular size, which was 50, I believe it says here, literal 50. Okay, so limit the game to 60. Okay, so this here is relevant because I was talking about game speed. But what if you have a device that cannot push 60 frames per second? I mean, you have to have a pretty old computer for this simple game, but there has to be some sort of solution there to avoid insane physics inside the game. What does flip do? It doesn't say. And then we have the exit. So pygame.quit and then sys.exit. One thing that I'm interested in here is, okay, so it's going to draw my character, but if I then move my character, is it going to, is it moving the rectangle or is it going to redraw it? Because then the previous rectangle is still going to be there. I guess it's creating an object and not as much drawing in the square. Like if that's built into Pygame and that's how the, the engine works or like the, the, the framework works, then that is probably fine. It is giving me an error message though. Let me, uh, let me send this. <laughs> <laughs> to chat GPT. Okay, well, according to uh, according to it, it's it's gonna work. So maybe it's just because my uh, text editor is not updated for Python. So let's uh, let's actually run it. I think is it uh, is it gonna give me an error message now because I'm not writing Python three? No, I guess not. <laughs> oh my God, it works. <laughs> Uh, we cannot move outside the boundary. That's awesome. So, okay, so if we close this down and go in and we change the speed, because let's, uh, let's do that. Let's uh, have it be 20. Here we go in. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, you know, for the, for people who, you know, want to make a game game, this is probably not too impressive, but I want you to stop and think for a second. This is built from scratch. And I know ChatGPT has kind of like fed it to me, but people widely misunderstand using ChatGPT because if you ask it for code, you need to be able to read the code and understand what it does before you start using it. You don't just copy paste and then just don't even bother understanding the code because ChatGPT will create garbage code often. For now, I think this is fine. Let me see what it says about the error messages because it is probably a VS Code thing. Okay, I think I might be overcomplicating things because I'm using Ubuntu and I have to set up the virtual environment and I don't know, I'm, I probably still need to do that, but it, it clearly does not know that I have Pygame installed. Okay, so we're gonna go back out again. I'm gonna restart and we're just gonna delete everything and I'm gonna go with Windows PowerShell. So now we need to do everything from scratch. Okay, so basically we need to go in and re-download Python for Windows. <laughs> this is so dumb. And it should hopefully this time work without throwing error messages. Copy. There we go. Good. And it still gives me the error messages. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> Python type checking mode overrides. Okay, so right now I'm not getting any sort of error messages. I just had to go in and change my extension. So I could have made this using Ubuntu or WSL in order to set this up, but I guess on Windows we're going to stick to PowerShell for now. But it was just an extension issue. This is one of the things I, I said, you know, like AI is good, but it's just a tool. It's not going to replace anything because you need to know how to use it. In this case here, it let me in wild circles. I basically installed everything twice and everything came down to <laughs> an extension error. So it's working now. And if I actually run this, you can see that we do have a game running that can do something. Either way, this is the beginning. We set up a square that can move. And my recording here is one hour and 17 minutes long <laughs> to, to get this working. This was basically just debugging for like an hour. 
<laughs> in order to get this working. Like just like my editor not giving error messages. First step in learning Python, at least Python gaming. What do you guys think? I think this is kind of awesome to see like an actual game being built, but it's not being built by some company owned, you know, application like Linux or not, not Linux, um, uh, Unity or Unreal Engine. With that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.